Greetings, my name is Ryan Nix. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. Joining me here today is Charlotte from Red Hat. Charlotte, say hi. Hi everybody, my name is Charlotte Fong and I am a Managed Openship Black Belt at Red Hat. Thank you for having me here, Ryan. Always a pleasure. Charlotte, uh, I've been working with uh, OpenShift customers, more notably the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS, so the managed version of OpenShift. And a common question I get from my customers is, yes, it's a managed service. What does that actually mean? What do I as a customer focus on? What does Red Hat do for me? What are the things that uh, infrastructure teams, administrators, operators not have to worry about? And secondly, when they need to reach out to support, what is the simplest path for that? Who does uh, a customer reach out to from a support perspective? And I think you've been working with a lot of customers and you've sort of unpacked this quite nicely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ryan, for that question, um, which is really an important one, because uh, going from like a serve managed, because that's what usually happens, customers go from they go from a serve managed to a managed service, and it causes that confusion, and they're not sure what am I supposed to do now, what is my responsibility, or what is Red Hat's and AWS's responsibility. So um, on this part here, I have like two. Um, blocks of responsibility separated out. Everything to my left is what the customer should worry about. Okay, so, so this is really customer over here. Yes. And I'm assuming then this side of the fence is what is being provided by the managed service by uh, most likely Red Hat SRE. Is that That's correct. correct. Let's spend some time and talk about the customer side of things here. I noticed that you've specified the application lifecycle. So that, that's the customer's applications, the development of those applications, maintenance of those applications. Do the management teams on the Red Hat side, so the SREs, have access to customers' applications, access to customers' data? No, we have no access to customers' application because the customer completely owns that. So SRE have no access to the customer managed projects and applications running in those projects. So very clear separation from a open shift uh, projects and namespaces perspective. Everything that is the customers is ring fenced from uh, the actual cluster. I suppose to some degree what Red Hat is doing in managing Red Hat's mandate or interest isn't around the applications. It's really to make sure that OpenShift as a platform is always there and working as expected. That way Red Hat focuses on this, the customer can focus on what's important to them and their business, which is their application workloads. You notice user management at the top. What do you mean by that? So for user management, what we do at uh, like the platform itself, it comes with an um, with an OAuth server, like an authentication uh, operator, and then you can it downloads the server. And what the customer is responsible for is making sure they grant access to their users, to their projects. It's like all of that is the customer's responsibility, okay. and you so, can use so a role-based access control. Um, that OpenShift comes with. Now, there's two parts to that. Uh, you know, when I, when I deploy an OpenShift cluster, one of the things I commonly do is I go and configure an identity provider, yeah. whether that's Microsoft Active Directory or whether that's an OIDC GitLab, type solution. Yeah. Uh, I, as the customer, then have to add users to there and define what those users have access to. So again, everything within the customer's side in terms of who has access to what element of my business is up to me, the customer not up to Red Hat. Uh, if the wheels fall off and I create a starting admin account and something happens with that admin account doesn't work, I can reach out to Red Hat to assist with that initial account, but that's just there to get the process started. That's not every single user uh, in the directory services. That's absolutely correct. So um, you have the initial admin account, and then after that we, we um, recommend that you give somebody dedicated admin um, privileges or a group of people depending on your business needs and then um, you, and then you can go from there. 
We right, use... let's shift across to what am I as a customer getting from Red Hat in terms of management? What are, I'm assuming these are SREs that are, are doing most of this? Yes. So over here we have uh, the Red Hat SRE team. What do you mean by each of these? How deep does this go? All right, so our SRE team is actually the team behind the managed service. They're the group that makes this a truly managed service because they take away, they take off the like heavy lifting, they do all the heavy lifting for you in the background so you don't have to worry about your platform availability and all of that. And so for cluster creation, what we do is we give you a self-service automation for you to just like I was going to say, you don't create a cluster, I do. I, I'm the one that types <laughs> on my keyboard, Rosa Cluster. Now, exactly. uh, what you mean is there's a very, very simple, intuitive step for the customer to create the cluster. Exactly. The automation, a lot of the stuff that is prescriptive, uh, it, it's a much simpler journey to what it was in, say, OpenShift 3. Exactly. And, and <laughs> the success or failure of that cluster creation really is within in Red Hat. I define which AWS uh, region I'm deploying into, whether it's a multi-AZ cluster, uh, what OpenShift version. I think there's probably about nine or ten parameters that yeah, I as so a well. customer decide, and mm -hmm. then the rest is real uh, automation in the background, and the SRE team is, is monitoring that in the back end exactly. to make sure that that goes ahead. Uh, cluster management, there is a bit of an overlap here because there are things that the customer can do on the cluster, but I think for the most part what we're talking about here is the health of the cluster. Yeah, we're talking about the health of the cluster, we're talking about cluster upgrades, we're talking about um, changes to the cluster. For example, for cluster, um, cluster upgrades, we do the upgrade for you, but we give you that self-service option where you can program when you want your upgrades to happen, and, and then it can be automatic or it can be single upgrades, depending on what works best for your company, and then we do it at the background. And um, for like, um, what else was I going to talk about? For like um, change management, um, capacity management, sorry, we do all the uh, control plane and the infra node um, capacity management so there, for you. There's two very interesting things there. The first is from a, an, an updates perspective, I can choose whether it's automatic or not. And if it's automatic, I define a schedule that works for my business. That's right. If it's not automatic, it, it's a bit more of a, a manual request process. I, I want to update now and I send a request in and then the SRE teams do the update. That's correct. And that update takes place without impacting my applications. Uh, the OpenShift environment is resilient in its design so I can update one node while the other two nodes are still servicing my applications and will cycle through them. From a break fix perspective and from a scaling perspective, you've got monitoring that the SREs are doing. So they don't monitor the applications themselves, they're monitoring the cluster and they're looking at what is the consumption on the worker nodes, the consumption on the control plane, and if if uh, an action is needed, they will either uh, scale those. From a control plane perspective, what I typically see is they will scale the EC2 instance types mm -hmm. on AWS. So they'll, they'll scale vertically, not horizontally. Yeah. Um, how is that communicated to a customer? Is, is that a reach out to customer and, and tell you there's a need for scaling, can we scale? Or do they just scale it and then notify you that that action is taken? Are you asking about the control plane scaling? Uh, let's talk about control plane scaling, for example. Okay, so as you said, they're proactively monitoring and they're looking at capacity and seeing if you're like uh, continuously um, going above capacity. And um, what they do is, as you said, they'll scale that for you and, and there'll be a notification just to let you know there was um, some change in capacity that needed to be done because um, you're needing um, more um, like your workloads are needing more like they're becoming bigger for our control planes to manage and um, and then from the customer's perspective let's say if your workloads are getting bigger and you're, met, you're using like CPU and memory and your worker needs to be scaled and you haven't 
uh, like enabled auto scaling, you also get like uh, a notification from my SRE team. So that's, so that's, can... that's a bit of a recommendation process as yeah. well, because I would typically add in a, a machine auto scaler and define a minimum and yeah. maximum. And, and that's really the machine autoscaler scaling the infrastructure and then the Kubernetes layer of OpenShift uh, managing the workloads across that. Uh, monitoring and logging, there's, there's monitoring and logging that's important to customers. There's also monitoring and logging of the cluster itself mm -hmm. and, and that's telemetry uh, to Red Hat. And network configuration is a bit of an interesting one because as a customer when I deploy OpenShift, I am going to define the AWS VPC that it deploys into, I'm going to get options such as like the machine cider and things right. and, and how much, what is the network configuration that, that Red Hat is managing? So the network configuration that we manage, we manage like the default load balancers that come with your cluster. We also manage, if you go with the installer provided, um, installer provision, the like if you go with our default installation, I, I should say that, we will provide like the VPC for you. We'll provide the subnetting. We'll also make sure uh, we provide the um, service uh, networking, the router layer that takes care of all of uh, the routing. So, so you, you're talking a bit about the provisioning process here. When I when I provision a ROSA cluster, I don't have to build out the entire network environment. I, I can take advantage of the installer to create that for me. That's right. But I do still have the choice to deploy it into an existing VPC. Uh, likewise, the uh, the router layer I think is super important because you've got those ingress controllers inside OpenShift that facilitate communication inside OpenShift's SDN to AWS, and, and the customer doesn't really need to worry about that. And you can now add custom domain names, you can, yeah. which uh, extend that, that automatically. Option. I think we did touch on the software and the security updates. Talk to me about support. So is support and management the same thing? Is there a separation? Are there considerations that customers need to take into account here? Um, thank you for that. So for management, our SRE team will take care of all of that. When it comes to support, uh, customers have the option because this is jointly supported by uh, Red Hat and by AWS. So it doesn't matter who you contact when you have an issue with your cluster or the infrastructure on which your cluster is running, you can either contact AWS support or you can contact Red Hat support and um, the, whatever uh, issue you're having with the platform will be um, so this, this is real customer choice. If, if I have a, a, a good working relationship with, say, AWS, absolutely, I can open up a support case with AWS. So they'll provide tier one support. Yeah. I'm assuming, if need be, they can escalate to Red Hat for something that is really OpenShift specific. And, and the inverse that's, is also true. That's true. So um, it doesn't matter where you put the support in. They'll bounce it off each other at different support teams. If it's something that's related to the platform itself, it will be sent to Red Hat support. If it's related to like the infrastructure, like the cloud infrastructure, it will be sent to AWS, like AWS support will handle that for you. Whichever team is best um, fitted to help with the problem will handle it. And you will notice is... any, any delay because we all do that in the background for you. In. But this is no longer a case of I as a customer don't need to open up a support case with AWS and a separate one to Red Hat and play the middleman. Red Hat and AWS are doing that for me. I choose where I reach out to and they will interact with each other. Absolutely correct. I, I think there are situations when it becomes very OpenShift specific. So if the customer has questions around how do I do something in OpenShift itself, such as take advantage of a, uh, you know, a, an abstraction provided by OpenShift, something that's not related to AWS in, in any way, uh, to me it does make sense to open that support case directly to, to Red Hat. You're um, right. So, yeah. Uh, is, with the SRE team being on the Red Hat side, if I know that there's something where I want uh, the SRE team to potentially make a change, so like a deliberate scaling action, uh, I'm assuming it makes a little bit more sense to again open up a support case with the Red Hat side to get to the SRE team quicker. That's right. Um, is there anything that is super important that we haven't discussed so far? I think we've touched on everything, and what I just want 
our customers to take home. If there's anything that you should take home from all of this is everything that pertains to your application, to your users, you will be you're like 100% responsible for them. And everything that pertains to the platform and support, AWS and Red Hat will provide that. I think there's one final thing that we need to do before closing, and that is the management of OpenShift has no impact, no change to the developer. My application owners, they're still doing exactly what they were. They're still getting all of the benefits from OpenShift. This change over here really impacts uh, infrastructure teams, operators, administrators. The developers will see no difference. Same interfaces, same CLI tooling, same pipeline process, same benefits. Life carries on. This is really a business streamlining and agility for the day two operational aspects. So you're really getting the benefit of, of both things here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Charlotte, as always, fantastic having you here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much, Ryan. And thank you. Bye, everybody.